some other technologies too to try to make sure that the Windows experience is as good as possible. Yeah, obviously, Switchbox will work on other platforms as well. Works on Linux, works on Mac OS, but uh, having the best possible experience on Windows is going to be uh, very, very important. And we definitely cannot underestimate the Microsoft. Um, it's even amazing to me that Microsoft has been able to form partnerships in the telecom world. Um, in fact, at the last conference, I sort of chastised the Mitel representative a little bit because they were talking about their partnership with Microsoft. And I said, well, uh, partnering with Microsoft is a bit like snuggling with a bear. It may feel warm and fuzzy right now, but wait till she wakes up and gets hungry, and then you'll be gone. So. Other questions? Sorry, me, me again. Um, the Switchfox thing, uh, what are your plans about translating that to German, having German voice prompts? Again, the German thing, uh, maybe having BRR because ISDN is kind of a major thing here. Yeah. Well, any, oh, any plans yeah. for that? So we should probably talk about that. Kevin, I don't know, are you going to go into more detail on the BRI stuff? Okay. So um, Kevin will talk more detail about this later, but um, we are have uh, created a new set of drivers for our BRI cards that are not based on on MISDN anymore, so that it will be easier to get all those drivers set up. Um, the integration of that plus uh, the internationalization um, is is part of the the goal for Switchbox. It should be in the next release of BE, and I'm hoping that it will be in a Switchbox release soon. Um, th there are sort of three stages to the internationalization of of uh, Switchbox, and the goal is to try to get the first one done. So the the first step is so that you can configure the system so that all the prompts and everything are in German. Um, well, obviously more than one language, all the languages that Asterisk will support. Uh, the second one is uh, to have the end user client, that is the part that, that allows you to see your presence, the switchboard, to have that translated into native language. And then lastly, to have the configuration interface. Um, uh, translate into native language. But the first goal is at least to get the prompts. Um, and I would certainly encourage all of you guys that are interested in seeing that technology uh, available in German um, to help press for it. So uh, I've certainly <laughs> talked to, talked uh, quite a bit uh, at Digium about the importance of internationalizing uh, uh, Switchbox. So I'm hoping that some additional pressure may help push it forward a little bit faster. Uh, in any case, we should have it on uh, on the uh, asterisk GUI uh, soon. Hello. Um, you earlier spoke about video integration in 1.6. Um, for me, I'm using asterisk mostly as a streaming server um, to deliver audio. Um, for delivering video, I use other stuff, but the most problem I have is on high quality audio um, to use it. Um, is there any progress in thinking about stereo or um, even Dolby 5.2, uh, 5.1, or um, what happens on the video front? I haven't done anything with that. I don't know, Ole or Kevin, do you guys know anything about anybody doing multi channel? We had a discussion on the. Wait, do you have a microphone? Where is the microphone? We had a discussion on the uh, well, after the Can you wait? Because otherwise we don't have that on the video. What? He'll bring you your microphone. Okay. Cool. Well, for um, new combinations of video and audio, multiple audio channels and everything, we need a new code path inside the asterisk and architecture and how to set this up. Because the current architecture is very focused on audio and yes and no codecs. I've been doing a work with something called video caps for many years now uh, that really enhances video negotiation but doesn't take us to multiple channels. And this is something we started to discuss and I think there's going to be a lot of work at the next Asterisk developer meeting in setting up a new model for call setup where we negotiate multiple channels, multiple combinations of audio, video and text 
because we also added real-time text to 1.6 for deaf and hearing impaired. I think the short answer was nothing right now. It's all just talk. Yeah. So. <laughs> Any other uh, questions? We have 14 more minutes left. What are we going to do? Maybe Kevin will come up and we can sing a duet. <laughs> All right, well, I guess, uh, I guess we'll break for coffee then if there's no other questions. Or is there any coffee outside? I don't know. What do you have planned? Uh, coffee, not yet. Soft drinks, yes. Uh, do you have any pictures of your new, new building? Yes, I do have a picture of the new building. If I can find it here. It's somewhere on my desktop, but... Oh, there we go. Wow, how perfect. Well, this is a rendering. I don't know if it really counts, but... Hopefully it'll come up here in a second. Yeah, that's a picture of it. Or the a rendering of it. Let me see if I can bring up an uh, actual photo here. As you can tell, I have a very messy desktop. Uh, if it will come up, there we go. Oh, that's kind of <laughs> highly, <laughs> it's a really high res. Let's try it. Uh, there we go. You can kind of see it in the background. Not a great picture. I guess I don't have any uh, really good pictures there. That's about all I've got. You just have to come to Huntsville and see it. Out of curiosity, how many people here have uh, been to Huntsville? Alabama. That's pretty good. I'm impressed. Oh, wow. There's the botanical schematic. <laughs> I wasn't quite sure I brought that up, but okay. Um, yeah, anything else? Oh, we got another question. Mm, um, maybe you can talk about what you think. Think. I mean, you're really deep into this thing of telephony. Um, where do you see um, telephony systems in 10 or 15 years? Um, do you have any thoughts on that? You may just tell us. Well, I think that the integration with the other communication systems is is probably the biggest change that we're going to see. Um, it seems like when people make soft phones, for example, that run on a PC, they seem obsessed with this idea that they're trying to duplicate a telephone on a PC. And I think eventually people are going to realize that that's a really dumb thing to do. Right? I mean, the reason that telephone is so basic is because that's all you've got is your DTMF. And when you're on a PC, you've got so much more flexibility about what you can show and how you can integrate the web experience, the phone experience, and everything together. And then as people move farther and farther away from traditional landlines and more into uh, cell phones, I think you're going to see more of the interaction with your PBX being pushed out to the cell phone. And this is, by the way, another spot where I think we may be able to uh, one-up Microsoft if we can do it fast enough, which is uh, bringing the interaction with the PBX all the way out to the handheld, having a native client support for being able to manipulate conference bridges, for example, being able to access directories, uh, how voicemail is represented, all of that stuff on the handheld would be uh, some important features to be able to go after. I think if you look at the, the history of Microsoft, it's rare that they get it right the first time, but eventually they'll get it. And 
y you know, we have a certain amount of time that we've just got to really uh, uh, beat them 